Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my uh, May 2023 reading wrap-up. Dane reads. I have one book for you. That is uh, Tales of Ten Worlds by Arthur C. Clarke. It's actually got 15 stories in it. I think like one or two. I think maybe the first one or two were non-fiction. The rest were like science fiction. Really cool um, mix of stories here. Like one of them, they were looking at um, life on Saturn. There was like this plant life. Um, yeah, all these kind of cool sci-fi themes. There was another guy who was like a politician who had a heart defect. Um, and they discovered that if he went into space, the Russians had got a way of fixing him. And basically because the Russians and the Americans are like fighting with each other still, they both wanted him to go up and get the treatment because the Americans wanted him to get the treatment because then it would show the value of having that technology and Congress would invest in it. The Russians wanted it because it would be a propaganda victory. And so he decides, fuck you both, I'm just gonna stay here and somebody else can have the treatment because there's only room for like 10 people up there. Um, so lots of these cool things that take these like science fiction concepts and then have like ethical dilemmas to them Which is what I really liked about uh, iRobot by Isaac Asimov Which this uh, short story collection did kind of remind me of I also love this edition a Golanx uh, Classic sci-fi hardback overall. I gave Tales of Ten Worlds 15 new stories by the best known SF writer in the world Arthur C. Clarke a 3.5 out of 5 Alrighty guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is Brian Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson, Deb Pramanik, and Alex Guimara's Dune House of Trades Volume 3. More great stuff. Um, I mean, with these books in general, I think their endings are possibly the highlights for me because they bring together all of the threads that have been sewn in like the uh, previous bits. And that's certainly the case here. Um, all three graphic novels in this, uh, well, they're bind-ups of comics essentially but all three of them have been fantastic this one has probably been the best i gave it a four out of five all right guys just the one book to wrap up for you today that is the death of mrs westaway by ruth ware it's a very um generic ruth ware novel really it's actually if anything it's got a little bit less of the mystery and crime that she, you're normally used to with her it almost has superstitious sort of vibes at, at, at one point um and it's got the usual unlikable characters but i think that works okay i don't think it's the most typical of her books it is just an okay read i gave it like a 3.5 out of 5 i mean it tells you a lot i was going to tab this out and review it and then i started reading it and i was like there's not enough for me to actually talk about here um and i definitely wouldn't recommend this as your first ruth ware book but if you're a fan of hers check it out yeah, it's alright, 3.5 out of 5. Probably the least like Agatha Christie out of all of hers as well, which isn't significant because she often gets um, touted as like the spiritual successor to Agatha Christie. And this shows maybe not so much. Alright guys, just the one book to wrap up for today. That is Dolphin Island by Arthur C. Clarke. It's kind of like a scientific uh, science fiction version of like Castaway or Robinson Crusoe or something like that. Basically a kid stows away on a ship and he ends up on this island in the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia where they're doing like research with dolphins and they learn to communicate with them, with them and all that sort of stuff. Uh, really short read, it's only about 120, 130 pages but it was really good, I really enjoyed it. I'll probably give it a 4 out of 5. Uh, it's not one of uh, Clark's better known books, but it is definitely worth picking up for sure. Hello, just got the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Prophecy by Peter James. Uh, this is basically a thriller. Um, there's lots of intense stuff. I mean, the very first scene in this book begins with somebody having a red hot um, fire, like poker, fireplace poker, shoved up their anus. Um, and we get lots of kind of pretty bleak moments following on from there as well. Overall, it's it's one of his older books, and it, you can tell because uh, Peter James, it's kind of his, his writing's leveled up a lot in more recent years. Um, but still worth reading. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5 if you're into thrillers. And I mean, it's almost like, uh, it almost reminds me of, like James Herbert or something like that. So if you're into that kind of thing, check it out. Um, but if you want to get into Peter James, it's probably not the best place to start. I would go with one of his crime novels, so yes. Alrighty guys, just got two books to wrap up for you. Um, one of them, I don't actually know where it has gone. Uh, I guess I already took it downstairs. Uh, so I'm just getting my review up here on my book blog. So it was Glide Path by Arthur C. Clarke, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, it was interesting because it was kind of historical fiction, although it was recent historical fiction. It was written about the development and use of radar during the Second World War, something that Clarke himself had a hand in. So he's kind of writing from experience as well. The plot was kind of slow, not going to lie. It was a weird read where I was like more interested in the backdrop of the story and like what was going on in the war than I was with the with the story itself. But still, it was just okay. 
And then I read The Purple Prince of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. This is another just like 3.5 out of 5. That's what all of these uh, Oz books are by this point. Again, they've got kind of to be derivative of themselves. Actually, this one, if anything, was slightly more inventive than the others. Uh, you get the what's his name, the uh, elephant, the elegant elephant Kabumpo is uh, is back in this, who I thought was quite a fun character. We get some giants, various other bits and bobs, and the usual stuff of going on to try and try and save Oz. So yeah, 3.5 out of 5. All right, just the one book to wrap up today, and that is Tales from the White Heart by Arthur C. Clarke. Um, this is reminiscent of the Uncle Oswald stories by Roald Dahl, because it's kind of like Clark retelling stories from another character's point of view. Um, the place, the White Heart, is like a, just a pub in London. I wonder if it's near Tottenham, I don't know. Um, but apparently the pub was a real place, a lot of the characters were real, and the general vibe was real. You've got like scientists, literary types, all kind of co-mingling in this one pub. Um, and yeah, just some, oh, a Fleet Street, there we go. Which makes sense why the writers are there, because that was like the old, um, like, journalism capital of London. But yeah, really fun stories. They're just like fun and playful. Um, they're actually more fun than anything I've ever seen Arthur C. Clarke do before. I kind of wish I'd seen, seen more of him doing this. It's almost comic science fiction in a way. Um, so yes, I would recommend this. I gave it a solid four out of five. Alrighty guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. This is Tampa Review issue number 65. Bunch of fiction, poetry, non-fiction, all of that stuff. Um, created by the University of Tampa. Um, what else do you need to know? It's pretty good actually. Um, I wasn't a big fan of like the, the prose and the fiction, but... Hi. Oh, you're off. Cheers. See ya. But the, the fiction was... Uh, the poetry was pretty good in this. Some pretty good writing. Um, I got this sent this because I'm a... I think I submitted something to them, so they sent it through to me in the post. And uh, yes, I did enjoy. Probably like a, a strongish 3.5 out of 5. Um, I don't know if I'd subscribe to it on the basis of this, but it's, it's still pretty good and worth checking out. So... So there you have it, Tampa Review issue number 65, 3.5 out of 5. All right, what am I doing? Uh, okay, wrap up. So I've just got a couple of books to talk to you about. Um, the first of those is Islands in the Sky by Arthur C. Clarke. So the premise of this book is basically uh, a guy goes on a game show and wins a trip to like an international space station, basically. And um, it's considered to be quite prophetic of developments because I think it was written in, what, the 50s, maybe? Um... First published in 1954. This version actually has an in, uh, introduction by Patrick Moore as well, which is very cool. And yeah, it's got like zero gravity and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and it's just written in a way, it feels as though it was written af like more recently than it was, I guess. Um, it does say in the introduction that it's like prophetic of um, how space travel will be by the, like, the 1990s. Not so much. Uh, we're not all going on holiday to our space stations, but overall still a good read. Probably a strong 3.5 out of 5. And then we have a Nosh Vegan, Plant-Based and Down to Earth by Joy May. So this is just a vegan cookbook. Really nice photography in it. Um, a lot of the recipes I already have stuff of. Um, so for example, there was a really nice uh, looking recipe for um, miso asparagus, uh, not asparagus, miso aubergine. But I already have a really good miso aubergine recipe, so I, I didn't want to, you know try the new one I guess um, but there are a lot of like desserts in here that were pretty good and then there's some like um, you know homemade sauces again I've got lots of these recipes so, like mango chutney tomato sauce chili sauce all that stuff I already have my my recipes my go-to's for those but it would be pretty good if you were if you were new to uh, veganism and you wanted a cookbook 3.5 out of 5 Alrighty guys, just a couple of books to wrap up for you today. Uh, okay, we'll start with this one. This is Reach for Tomorrow by Arthur C. Clarke. This is 12 short stories about the universe. Um, the main, well, they're, they're, they're kind of all different lengths, really. The first one was actually almost a novella, uh, and that was Rescue Party. Um, yeah, it's got, sorry, it's got Rescue Party, A Walk in the Dark, The Forgotten Enemy, Technical Error, The Parasite, The Fires Within, The Awakening, Trouble with the Natives, The Curse, Time's Arrow, Jupiter 5, and The Possessed. Pretty good short stories. Clark does a pretty good job in short stories in general, you know, so I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. And then... I also read this bad boy, so this is You Are Here, Around the World in 92 Minutes by Chris Hadfield. So Chris Hadfield is an astronaut. These are all photos taken from the International Space Station. And it's basically like a photo book, but with little uh, explanations of what's going on in each of the photos as well. Uh, it shows kind of all over the world. It, there's actually a map towards the end, which shows, this shows you the points where all of the photos were taken. And uh, what I noticed is there weren't many of Russia. Seems a bit, seems a bit odd. Um, or like Canada or Alaska, I guess. Um, but yes, 3.5 out of 5, very cool stuff. All right, guys, just a few books to wrap up for you today. We have uh, The Ink Black Heart, which is uh, Robert Galbraith, 
latest in the strike series 3.5 out of 5 it was just okay I don't know what to tell you man they're, they're all pretty much just okay uh, they could all do with a heavy amount of editing to cut them down by about a third all right, I also read Voices from the Sky by Arthur C. Clarke. This is like a non-fiction collection. It's kind of a weird collection, to be honest. It's like little mini essays that he wrote for various like publications and things. Um, they're reasonably interesting. Um, it's sometimes hard to get sort of absorbed in them, and also it does feel very bitty. Uh, because again they were all published individually and he's kind of brought them together and put them in not quite an arbitrary order but not far off it either overall it was okay probably like a strong three out of five uh, one really for completionists rather than the general reader and then I read Half Human Heroes not all heroes look the part a fantasy anthology edited by Jeremy Fee so this has got forward by Philip Chase PhD Dishonored in Death by Mason Aidy Go Goatman's Bridge by PM Brown The Band Gets Together by some guy called Dane Cobain Home of the Gnome by Jeremy Fee, Abandoned Hope by Jessica Haas, Amaranthine Amphitheatre by Luam QD Hall, Lies of the Sunstone and the Hybrid Prince by S.D. Houston, Red Eyes by Kupal Yosef Kark, More or Less Human by Margaret Pinyard, and The Defense of Burgond by David Wiley. And it's a pretty good, it's a nice mixture. Most of it is like, um, not quite hard fantasy, but on the harder spectrum, I suppose. Um, but there's some stuff that almost like verges into horror. Mine is like comic fantasy. Just a nice little mixture of different stories in this. And they're all of a really high quality to the point at which I think mine is probably the weakest. But Shay says I'm not allowed to say that. Um, but yes, they were all very good. Uh, so I gave it a strong 4 out of 5. Alright guys, just got the one book to wrap up for you today. That is The Deep Range by Arthur C. Clarke. This is basically, um, it's, it's about the sea basically um, and it kind of builds on the one that I read recently whose name I cannot remember a dolphin island that has similar stuff so like man has learned to control fish and dolphins and whales and all that shit um, and it kind of covers over fishing and all of that other stuff it's kind of science fictional but also at the same time I mean it's set on our world which is quite interesting because usually when you think of sci-fi you think of stuff out in space good characterization in this is a kind of a bit of a mystery going on about the history of one of the characters as well overall it was all right it was like 3.5 out of 5 um, yeah Ojo and Oz by Ruth Pummy Thompson 3.5 out of 5 another pretty standard installment in the Oz series the best part about this is the dicks um, they they went to a place where everyone was uh, called Dick because they were all addicts, I think. And you get like lines like, "Do you mean to tell me every Dick in Dixieland is perfectly satisfied?" Uh, and they are perfectly satisfied. That's the queerest thing about them. So yeah, there was lots of innuendo in this that I think possibly was intentional, possibly not. I don't know when when was this published? 1933. So who knows? But um, yes, that was probably the funniest thing about this, and some of the puns were quite good. Very dad jokey, 3.5 out of 5, you know, you know, is what it is. Alright guys, just the one book to wrap, uh, wrap up for you today, that is uh, The Lion of Kamar and Against the Fall of Night by Arthur C. Clarke. Basically two novellas in one. Uh, the Lion of Kamar is really interesting, it was my favourite of the two. Basically a guy discovers this like ancient civilization that's got loads of technological advancements, and it kind of ends up with all sorts of different sort of philosophical questions then going on around that uh, which Clark does really well uh, and then against the fall of night is basically the city and the stars but like an earlier version of it I don't remember the city and the stars I read it a long time ago um, but yes I certainly enjoyed both the novellas in this I gave it a, a strong 3.5 out of 5 and it is the end of the month so that's about it for this month's wrap up as always thanks a lot for watching don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them hit that like button if you enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot Bye-bye.